Hallelujah. God is good all the time. He's right here in our midst. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. He does not change. Amen. It's good to be here and worship together. We have a few more people here today. Some of our church leadership team are here today also. We're so pleased. It's nice to see you live and in person. Soon we'll all be able to gather here again. We are looking forward to it. Great. Today I received something special in my heart. I actually wanted to preach something different, but as I was preparing for it, I felt the Lord was leading me in a special direction. I know these things never happen without a reason. God is up for something. If you have your Bible with you, open it with me in Acts chapter 1. We start reading in verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It's not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming back soon. I believe that with all my heart. And not just any Jesus, this Jesus. This Jesus who came, the eternal word of God, God himself, he came and he gave his life for us on the cross. The one who paid the penalty for our sins. He who died and rose again. He who defeated death. It is he who comes for us. Just like the angels said, this Jesus who was taken up into heaven, he will come back. Amen. That encouraged me so much. He himself is coming for us. He's not sending an angel. He sends no servant. He himself is coming for us because he loves us. He himself wants to come to us to take us away. We, the church, are his bride. He loves us and he looks forward to our reunion. I'm sure of it. Amen. Of course, he is with us right now through his spirit. But the day is coming when we will see Jesus again face to face. Amen. Hallelujah. In China, there is a sect which claims that Jesus has already returned. The cult has three to four million followers. One of their main teachings is that Jesus has already returned and is now living in China. But as a woman, that is not what the angels said. We love women and it's not about gender. But the angels said, this Jesus, no other. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming for us. He said so himself in John 14, verse 2 and 3. In my father's house are many rooms. If it weren't so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? In other words, he would not have said it like that if it weren't so. Amen. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. That's what he wants. He wants us to be where he is. He comes for that purpose. Now he is in heaven with the Father. He sits at the right hand of the Father. But he is not just sitting, 
He's making a place for us. He's preparing your house, your apartment, for you. And when he is finished, he will come to take us with him. Hallelujah. He has promised to come back and take us with him. Nowadays, it's very popular to say, Jesus did not come to take us to heaven. He came to take us to the Father. And that's true. Jesus came to restore our relationship with the Father. But where is the Father? He is in heaven. Maybe I'm not very smart, but when Jesus brings us to the Father, he takes us to heaven. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to heaven. Don't get me wrong. I'm not worried and I'm not afraid. But the state the world is in now was never God's will for mankind. A world where there is sickness, suffering, war and hunger, that was never God's will. The good news is that this age we live in will come to an end. Jesus will come back. He will restore everything on earth. He has great plans for us all in his great end time plan. Today, I want to talk about the question the disciples asked Jesus. They asked, Lord, are you restoring the kingdom for Israel at this time? They knew that Jesus is the Messiah. The Messiah was to rule and reign over Israel. And his royal rule would spread over the whole world. They asked him, are you doing this right now? You are talking to us now and you are here. Why don't you do it now? Interestingly, many people are talking now about the return of Jesus. They say, look, there are so many signs in the world now. Now we know that he is coming soon. I'd like to say, even without seeing a sign, we should know that he is coming soon, because he said it himself. See, I'm coming soon. I know it can also mean when he comes, he comes quickly. That's clear. But no matter how you interpret it, compared to eternity, Jesus will surely come soon. If we compare this to the time that exists for all of us, then he will come for us soon. Right now, many people are talking about the end times and the events in the world. I can understand that. Many preachers talk about conspiracy theories. They talk about 5G networks and how dangerous it is. They talk about the dangers of RFID chips. They are not scientists, but they preach about it anyways. How dangerous that all is. A lot of people talk about vaccines, about how dangerous it all is or can be. Others talk about Bill Gates and how dangerous he is. And we all know he's very dangerous. Some guy with 90 billion dollars, that's pretty dangerous. Let me say, Jesus never called us to preach on the 5G network. He never called us to preach about vaccines. He never called us to preach about RFID chips and Bill Gates. That's not our message. Our message is Jesus is coming soon. There are some of these lurid videos where preachers mix today's headlines with a little pseudoscience, add some Bible passages and make these scary videos from it. I want to say, fear does not come from God. God's word builds up faith when it is preached, not fear. It builds expectation on good things, not bad things. There will be difficult times ahead, we all know that. But our message is, Jesus died and rose again and he will come back soon, hallelujah. Prepare yourself, he is coming. There is hope, there is freedom, there is eternal life through Jesus Christ. We don't have to worry and we don't have to be afraid. Hallelujah. Amen. I get about 10 of these videos sent to me every week as a recommendation. I don't want to speak bad about these things. I'm grateful for the people who think of me. It's true, I don't know everything, I need help. But nobody in the world has so much time to watch all these videos I get sent every week. Not even me. To be honest, 
I don't watch all the videos. I'm sorry if that disappoints you. It's more important to me to read the Bible, spend time with God and hear His voice. Don't get me wrong, I know there are good things. I may have watched two of these videos. Yours was probably one of them. It doesn't matter. That is not our message. They even talk about Jesus coming back in these videos. And that's a message I can deliver. I think so too. He's coming soon. We've even been commissioned to preach it. We see that in all four Gospels. We see that in the book of Acts. We see it in all the letters. Every letter written by the Apostles speak about the return of Christ. We also see it in Revelation over and over again. Jesus is coming. Amen. Some people are so excited about it now. But where were they three months ago? This message has been in the Bible for 2000 years. I would like to say, just because we are expecting certain things at the moment doesn't mean that we have to get nervous now. No, we must remain faithful to the mission the Lord has given us. If we do this now in a time of crisis, then we will be fine. And if we remain faithful when the sun is shining and there is no crisis, then everything will be fine. Amen? Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! It's not news. Jesus is coming soon. The apostles even believed that Jesus would return during their lifetime. They all expected Jesus to come back during their lifetime. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-17, Paul said, For the Lord himself, notice, the Lord himself, will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, please note, then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Please note, Paul expected Jesus to return in his lifetime. He said, I am one of the people who will remain until he returns. That's what he expected. We can see it in all the letters. The apostles expected a quick return of Jesus Christ. Paul also said, every time we celebrate Holy Communion, we proclaim his death until he comes. 1 Corinthians 11, 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Say it with me. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. He is coming. On the other hand, I also know people who say Jesus cannot come soon because there is still too much work to do. There are still too many people and countries that have not heard the gospel. Why did Paul not say this? Why did he not say it will probably take a very, very, very long time? We cannot really expect Jesus back now because there is so much to do. Why didn't Paul and the other apostles preach such things? They all believed in it. Jesus is coming soon. This has an impact on us as Christians, a positive effect that we need in our lives. 1 John 3 verse 2 says, Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. He will come, and we will see Him as He is, and we will be transformed at that moment. Amen? This is our hope. This is what John wrote here. And then he says in verse 3, All who have this hope in Him purify themselves, just as He is pure. People who have this hope purify themselves. They do what they can do to cooperate with God in this sanctification process. People who know we will soon see Jesus face to face are carrying a hope that will change their lives. As far as I'm concerned, 
You barely hear anything about the message that Jesus is coming back soon in churches today. It's not preached very often. I know that there are so many different opinions on this subject that some preachers are afraid to preach about it. But it's one of the main topics of the Bible and the New Testament. We need to know something about it and we need to be able to talk about it. Jesus is coming because we know this, we live differently, we think differently and we talk differently. We know that he could come any time and that is why we consider our mission to be vital for our neighbors, work colleagues and schoolmates. Amen. Hallelujah. My personal opinion in this regard is, and I don't like to preach opinions, but I think the Bible confirms it. I think there's a main reason why many Christians don't lead a very holy life. With many Christians, you can't tell the difference between them and people in the world. I think one reason is that they don't have that hope. They think, Jesus is certainly not coming during my lifetime, I have much time. When I'm 90 years old and I will die soon, then I can fix everything with the Lord. I know nobody who is watching this video right now thinks that way. But all the people who are not watching this video right now probably think that way. I have plenty of time. Where does it say that we have plenty of time? It's written that we are to expect his return. He's coming for us and he's coming soon, hallelujah. If we don't expect him to come, then we live so slothful. We see our mission and think we have a lot of time to do this or that. But dear people, we have already seen that this can change very quickly. Nobody knows the day or the hour when Jesus will come back. We don't know it. But what would you do if you knew that Jesus would come back next Friday at 4 p.m.? The trombone will sound next Friday at 4 p.m. I'm sure the first thing you would do is talk to your wife a little nicer and a little more lovingly. All the women say Amen. Secondly, you would probably make the decision to quit smoking this week and you would. You would definitely call all your family members, friends, schoolmates, work colleagues who don't know Jesus yet and tell them Jesus is coming. You have to be prepared. This is very serious because after that it will be difficult in this world. Amen? There are some people who say they do not believe that Jesus will come back soon. They have a lot of pseudo-biblical mathematical formulas to back that up. One of them is the Jewish calendar, or different days found in the book of Daniel mixed with the years in Revelation and month we find in Zechariah. They mix it all together and they have their own opinion about when all this will happen. That is not our message either. Our message is the gospel that we preach until he comes. He might come tomorrow or even in hundred years. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change our mission. Many people say they do not believe that Jesus will return soon because there are too many people who still need to hear the gospel. The apostles never preached that. This is not a message you find in the Bible. Maybe that's your conviction and you say there are really many people yet unreached and God wants a big harvest. I also believe that he wants a great harvest, but things can go much faster than we imagine. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday and that is our holiday in this church. We are Pentecostals to the bone. Amen. Some people watching will wonder what a Pentecostal is. It's not someone who's had one too many drinks, if that's what you were thinking. No, it's a spirit-filled Christian who believes that God is still the same and still works miracles. Hallelujah. Amen. People who say that Jesus will not return soon preach something different than the apostles. Dear people, I'd rather stand with the apostles. Amen. Think about how quickly things can change. On the first day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit fell, Peter won 3,000 people to the Lord in just one sermon. If this was to happen in Austria, every day our job would be done quickly. We often only think of our own resources and our own abilities, but what we have and what we can do is much too little. 
For the Holy Spirit is all-powerful, He can do everything. I am convinced that God can do a quick work. Hallelujah! We also see in this Corona crisis, for example, how the whole world was shut down within a few days. All the borders were closed. Suddenly nobody could travel and we were quarantined. All this happened within a few days. I don't want to make fun of these videos, but for me it's just too much right now. 5G networks every day, dear people, preaching Jesus, that is your and my mission. I am convinced that these things that have happened lately have been like a test run for the globalized government that will one day rule the whole world. When the Antichrist comes, this shows us very well that we are living in the end of the last days. But this still does not change our message. Hallelujah! We also know that some good things have happened during this Corona time. Actually, I don't call this time Corona time, but harvest time. Because we have seen that many people have opened their hearts to Jesus. Many people have come to the Lord. People who had nothing to do with God are now watching videos and live streams. Some even come to prayer meetings via Zoom. These things spread all over the world. I am convinced that the gospel is being preached and proclaimed now, much more than two months ago. Amen. That's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, 5G networks, Bill Gates, vaccines and so on. But dear people, good things have happened and these things are connected to our mission. For example, in April there was an online conference in the United States where many churches participated. More than 100,000 people made a decision for Christ. These people wrote emails and comments that they received Jesus. They have shown, yes, my life belongs to Jesus Christ now, in one event. Dear people, we only need a couple of events like this regularly and we will have the work done soon. Amen? I believe that these things that are happening in the world right now are leading somewhere. I didn't bury my head in the sand. But again, our mission is to preach the gospel. Hallelujah! These events of the last month are leading in a certain direction. It is the direction that God has foretold. In the end, His plans will be fulfilled. He will reap His big harvest. For His body, His children proclaim the good news of Jesus. And millions of people who are lost are sitting in the darkness, will experience the light of God. They will feel His love for the first time in their lives. They will be saved. Hallelujah! Thank God! Hallelujah! We live in very important times. We are living in harvest season. I do not call it Corona time. It's God's harvest time. Amen? His purposes will be fulfilled. 2 Peter 3, 3-7 Knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires, they will say, Where is the promise of His coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. For they deliberately overlook this fact. People who talk like that are blinded. There are things they don't know, no matter how smart these people sound and no matter what their arguments are. People who say things like, where is his second coming? He's not coming back anytime soon. They are blinded. 
Unfortunately, there are also Christians who are blinded in this area. Let's read on. For they deliberately overlooked this fact that the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God and that by means of these the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. We don't want to side with the mockers. We want to be on the side of the believers. We believe what God and Jesus said. Amen. Hallelujah. Note that when Peter spoke about the return of Jesus, he also spoke about the judgment that is to come. There will be a day of judgment in this world. Many people live as if everything will be normal and good again so that we can lead a simple, and comfortable and beautiful life again here in Austria. I want to tell you, it will never be the same again as it once was. This power, which was exercised in the last time, will be used again. For what purposes, we don't know yet. But we do know one thing, Jesus Christ is with us, no matter what happens, he promised, hallelujah. Until the end of the world, until he comes again, he will be with us until we have fulfilled our mission. Peter said that these mockers are blinded and there are things they cannot see. You can talk about the dangers of 5G, Bill Gates and RFID chips and mix it with scripture, they won't hear or understand it. You can't convince them with human wisdom. It's a spiritual delusion and spiritual delusions can only be broken by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! We need more knowledge of God's word, not the daily headlines. We need less of these convincing arguments of preachers who don't preach the word of God, but rather things that distract us and more of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on, somebody. Can anyone help me to praise the Lord? Hallelujah. 2 Peter 3, 8 to 10. The word explains this. We should not be blinded. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any one should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. There is so much truth in this passage. For example, the day that comes like a thief in the night, we will not be able to say, look, this and that happened, there are no events left, that means he's coming next Friday at 4 p.m. Or the numbers from Daniel, 1260 days plus three and a half months minus 42 months. This is how people want to tell us when the day is coming. You won't be able to tell. He comes like a thief in the night. We must be ready at all times. We should be ready today. The trumpet might be blown today. I want to say when it is, I'm going with Jesus. I have nothing here to hold me. I will be happy to walk with the Lord. Some people talk about pre, mid and post-tribulation rapture. Do what you want. I'm leaving on the first train. Hallelujah. Amen. When the trumpet blows, I'm walking with Jesus. It could happen today. It will happen in a moment when people are not expecting it. Every time someone claims that Jesus is coming on this or that day or this year on Rosh Hashanah, The Jewish anniversary of the creation of the world, this is claimed every year. It could be that Jesus comes back in September on this Jewish holiday. But when people say this year in September will be, then you can be sure that it will not be so. 
because then he would not come like a thief in the night, but like an expected friend. This is not the case. We must live in expectation. We must live in readiness. But God sees time differently than we do. We've just read that. You know, in heaven, the clocks work differently. What's a short time to us, like a day, for example, is like a thousand years to the Lord. We think that these two statements mean the same thing. They are not, they are opposite. What is very short for us can be a very long time for the Lord. I think that this waiting period that he is in until we finally stand before him and will remain with him is a very, very long time for him. That is how he feels. Then he continues, a thousand years, a very long time for us, is like a day for the Lord. These statements are contrary to each other. Peter did not want to give us a mathematical formula we can use to find out. Because if it is so that thousand years are like one day, then we only have a few more days, right? I mean, our days, the short days. Actually, Peter was trying to tell us that God is looking at time differently than we do. I heard a joke once. A little boy asked God, Is it true that one day is like a thousand years for you? God said, Yes, my son, it is. The boy asked, Is it true that a million dollars is like a cent to you? And God said, Yes, you could say that. And the boy smiled and asked, Will you please give me a cent? And God said, Gladly, my son, but I'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> this is not a mathematical formula. People say sometimes, one day is like a thousand years. That means, look here, God created Adam on the sixth day. Those six thousand years are over. The time of man is over. Then God has come to his rest. That means he will also return to his rest. I don't want to make fun of this either, but it's not what Peter meant. He just meant that God sees time differently than we do. What is soon for the Lord is perhaps long for us. What is long for us is short for the Lord. Hallelujah! He sees time differently than we do. The main point that Peter actually makes here is that God has not postponed his promise, but is waiting for us. He's waiting for us until we carry out our mission. He waits because he does not want a single person to be lost. No matter if Jesus comes back next week or not for another hundred years, he is coming back. And until he comes, we have a mission to accomplish. Now we come back to the question that the disciples asked. I already said it will take some time. Acts 1, 6. They asked him, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Verse 7. Notice how he speaks. He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. A short break before we continue reading. God has already set this day. God already knows on which day Jesus will return. And he will not change it. He has said it. That means it is determined. Whether you are ready or not, you cannot stop it. And you cannot extend your time here on earth. When he comes, you must be ready. Jesus said, it's not for you to know times or seasons, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. One of these things is not our business, and one of these things is our business. Many people deal with things that are not within their responsibility. It's none of our business. It's above our pay grade, so to speak. This is only for the upper level, only for God himself. It's not for us to know or to find out. Our business is to let ourselves be filled with the Holy Spirit, to go out and tell all people that Jesus came, 
that he died and rose from the dead, that he defeated death, that he lives and gives eternal life to everyone who believes in him. That is our thing. Amen. Hallelujah. We are not here to preach 5G networks, vaccines, RFID chips or Bill Gates. They are all distractions. Our task is to be witnesses for Jesus Christ in this world. Not with the wisdom of man and clever arguments, but in power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to read something that someone once wrote on Facebook. It was me. Our message is not the Antichrist, RFID chips, medical conspiracies, 5G technologies and so on. We should preach the good news until Jesus comes. When he comes next week, wonderful. If he doesn't come back in our lifetime, our mission remains the same. What should we do if this is all an Antichrist strategy of the end times? Preach the gospel. What should we do if this virus is a biological attack? Preach the gospel. What should we do if the 5G network is responsible for the virus? Preach the gospel. Look, if all these videos and prophecies and conspiracies are true, and they are not, it doesn't change our mission. Preach the gospel. The spirit of the Antichrist, many people are talking about the Antichrist right now, and some certainly believe that it is Bill Gates. I don't want to say anything about it, because in the 90s they also said that he is the Antichrist and they made some pretty funny videos about it. He probably takes that as praise that so many people think of him. But on the subject of the Antichrist, I want to say our mission is not to preach that the Antichrist is coming. Hello, church. Where did we get this mission? Our mission is to go and preach the gospel. That's the good news. Jesus says you will be my witnesses, not witnesses to the Antichrist. Amen. Hallelujah. John wrote in 1 John chapter 4 that the spirit of the Antichrist was already at work in the world at that time. The spirit of the Antichrist has been in this world for at least 2,000 years. He is fighting against the true Christ. We have to deal with all this and must not forget what we are called and commissioned to do by God. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. That is why we are here. Our message is good news, not fake news. Our message is the gospel and not a conspiracy theory of 5G network and Bill Gates and so on. It's about saving humanity. I want to end with a true story. I've told this story very rarely. Maybe you heard it once if you have been in this church for a long time. I think I told it only once. I had a notebook then. I'm talking about a story from the 1990s. I found the notebook I used for writing everything down back then. I also received a special song back then about the end times. It's on my CD, The People Would Rather Dance. It was September 11, 1990. I woke up in the middle of the night. It was really a weird time for me back then. I always slept well. I could have slept till 10 a.m. every day. I'm a musician, I'm very good at that. But I woke up in the middle of the night and I knew that the Lord wanted to speak to me. I got up and went out of the bedroom because I didn't want to disturb Judy. I went into the living room and knelt down to pray. I had no idea what it was about. I started praying in tongues. After a few minutes, these words came to me several times. The end of all things is near. 
I didn't know what it was, but it was as if God wanted to say something very special and important in my life. I wrote it down and I translated it for you. I have it in this little notebook. The end of all things is near. The time is short. I haven't read it anywhere else, not even in this church. This is the first time I've told this story in this way. The time is short, now is the time. This is what the Lord said to me, the harvest should be reaped. Rise up and carry out what I commanded you both by my word and by my spirit. Souls are at stake. In the days of Noah, people ate and drank, did business as usual, and when the flood came, everyone except Noah and his family perished. These days are similar. The business of the world system goes on. Malice is abundant. But I told you to tell them to escape the wrath to come. Go out, speak my word in the streets, ghettos, marketplaces, and any place that will have you. You know, people, I actually did. I went everywhere, in the streets, and the ghettos, and the worst parts of the city, in old people's homes, in prisons, to preach the gospel. That was before the Lord sent us to Austria. And he said, in all these places that will welcome you, my word shall be a sharp sword in your mouth. The hearts of many will be pierced as never before. Go, I'm with you and will confirm my word that you speak. And then the Lord said something to me. I don't know if it will make sense to everyone. But then I had already finished Bible school. I wanted nothing else but to serve the Lord. I never thought about a pastorate, but rather about being an evangelist. I wanted to be a part of God's army and his servant. For me, ordination was a very important topic at that time. But to be ordained, you had to be in full-time ministry, and I wasn't. I was still on the road. I was on the road more than many people who were in full-time ministry. But that was not considered full-time service because it was retirement homes and prisons and things like that. That was an important thing for me because I thought I'm already preaching more than many other people. The Lord spoke to me that night and said, Fred, consider this day your ordination ceremony because I commissioned you today, appointed you and sent you out. That was September 11, 1990. The Lord has told me that we must proclaim this message. We must do everything possible to get it out. Preach His word. We must not be distracted by all kinds of conspiracy theories and things like that. Don't get me wrong, there might be a real core to some of these messages, but that is not our message. Our message is that Jesus came and paid for your sins through his death. He has risen, defeated death, and he is coming again. Prepare yourself. Because after that comes a day on this earth that will be very, very bad. The worst time ever will come to this earth. It will be difficult for people who are not prepared for it. Like in the days of Noah, people lived and had no idea. They were clueless. Noah built and preached, built and preached. But people were clueless. That's the way it is today. Dear people, we must tell the people. You say yes, but you said maybe Jesus will come back in 100 years. There are many of your neighbors and work colleagues who do not have 100 years left. Some of them don't even have time until next week. Some of them will get a bad diagnosis in the next month. Some of them only have little time left. Regardless of the day when Jesus will return, it is our mission to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to preach the gospel. Amen? Hallelujah. I keep talking about the return of Jesus Christ because it's part of my mission. It's part of the mission for the whole body of Christ. You can tell people, I'm telling you, there's power in that statement. 
There's power in the word of God. But people will laugh at me. You may be laughed at by some mockers. But it could also be that there are some people who feel the power of the Holy Spirit in your words and they will repent. Hallelujah! To encourage you. Don't be frightened by all these videos you are watching now at this time. If you know Jesus Christ, you have no reason at all to be afraid. You have no reason to be worried. He promised that He would be with you. If Jesus is with you, it doesn't matter what happens on this earth. Don't be afraid. Jesus is with you. Go there. In the streets, ghettos, marketplaces, prisons, all people's homes, in your neighborhood, everywhere, let them know Jesus loves them. Amen. Father, I thank you today for your word. I thank you for Jesus, our Savior, who will return soon. Lord, we believe in your return. We believe that you will come soon. You are coming to take us to you that we may be with you for all eternity. We look forward to that day, Lord. But our heart is also partly heavy because we know that there are so many people who have not heard your word, so many people who are blinded, to whom all these things are hidden. We ask you to let us experience Pentecost anew. It is not our business to know times and dates. It's our business to be filled with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill us anew with your Spirit. Holy Spirit, fall on each one of us. Fall now upon this place. Lord, fill us all anew. Make us supernatural witnesses for Jesus. That signs and wonders will happen. That healings and deliverances will happen every day, Lord. Pour out again of your Spirit. Reign on us here in Austria. Reign on us, on the whole body of Christ, on the Catholics, on the Evangelicals, on the Reformed, on the Protestants, on the Orthodox. Reign on the body of Christ, Pentecostals, Charismatics. Reign on us. May the Spirit of God be upon us. Hallelujah. Make us powerful witnesses for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The end of all things is at hand. But we have nothing to worry about. No reason to be scared. Jesus is here for us. If you just watch this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, you never trusted him with your life, then I want to invite you to pray a prayer with me. We are saved by grace through faith, not because of our works. You and I can never be good enough. But God's grace is great enough for us all. Jesus reaches out and knocks at the door of your heart. If you want to entrust your life to Jesus Christ today, if you say, yes, I want to be ready too when Jesus comes again, then I invite you to pray this prayer with me. This is a prayer of surrender. We give our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are at home, close your eyes and pray these words after me. Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you now and I give you my life. I believe in you. You gave your life for me on the cross. You died for me. You paid the penalty for my sins. I believe that. You beat death. You are risen. And you live forever. I believe that with all my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. You be the Lord of my life. I receive you now. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray for each and every one who's prayed this prayer for the first time. Bless them. Surround them with love, kindness, grace and joy. Let them know how precious they are. 
In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed this prayer for the first time, we have prepared a small gift for you. There is some reading material, some small books, and some information about the church. We would like to send you these, because we all need help in our walk of faith with the Lord. It will help you. Please write us an email. The information you see on the screen, write us an email or a comment on this video. Let us know that you have given your life to Jesus Christ. If you need prayer for anything, please write us. We will gladly pray for you. Our God is a prayer-hearing Father. He is the Almighty and with Him everything is possible. Amen. Jesus is coming soon, but until He comes, we have a job to do. I want to encourage you all. Go there. Now is the time. Let us stand up and announce the good news to the whole world. Amen. God bless you. Have a nice Sunday. We love you.